Hey there, you lovely bunch of beautiful podcast pals. What's going on? You're listening to me, Salman Qureshi, on the Expat Brat Podcast. Whoop, whoop. I really should stop saying that, right? It just sounds so much like I'm announcing some radio show on. What What is going on with you guys? I'm uh, I'm sitting at home. I, ju- I just made myself a cup of Karak chai. If you if you're not if you haven't lived in the Gulf or I guess if you've lived under a rock, uh, <laughs> you might not know what Karak chai is, but it's this strong cup of tea. I mean, I don't know. Some people add saffron and cardamom. I keep it simple. Uh, when I say I keep it simple, I normally don't make it because I have this unique talent of trying to make Karak chai and getting it all completely wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have followed like a gazillion YouTube videos and I've uh, I've seen those quick ones on TikTok. I've looked up these bloggers who all go like I've got the perfect way for you to make a cup of tea. And then I make it, I get all the ingredients, I try it over and over. It's day 6 of me trying. And uh I I think at this point I'm just enjoying the process of making tea cuz it just it it feels nice. It's kind of calming, uh meditating. You know, almost in your mind, you're kind of like just maybe that's the real effect of tea. <laughs> so it's making the tea that sounds better. And and yeah, yeah. So it, it really kind of just gives me a little calmness and something to focus on and do. It, it's nice that way. Then I take the first sip <laughs> and I just go, this is terrible. This is the worst cup of tea I've ever had. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. What I'm doing wrong, I have no idea. I don't understand. It sounds so simple. Every instruction you see online, you just you follow. I, 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 a few a few times I've even that in the past. I've asked my mom, I've asked my sister, and, and they've taken me through it. And all, all it all just sounds like I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it. that's all I got to do. Okay, got it. And then I I do it, and I take my sit. I I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's do I cook it too long? <laughs> well, I've just made one just before starting the podcast, and I haven't taken a sip yet because it's still it's still boiling. It is boiling like it is boiling like the world, the globe is boiling. <laughs> man, have you been have you been seeing these uh, <laughs> animals? Man, they're I I just think the animals are going crazy. Like uh, I saw I saw a clip of a bear. Bears are out and about now. I saw a clip of this bear in, I think it was in Burbank, so that's in California. Um, and he, he or she, I don't know the gender. I, I shouldn't assume. I didn't read the whole. But I didn't. Yeah, I, how, who would know <laughs> whether it was a male or female? It's not a circus or a zoo where they've got name tags on or some shit. <laughs> anyway, so this bear is just like broken into someone's house and is just using the pool chilling out at the pool and i think uh this bear has the right like um right idea and uh but it's cool like like it's it's just interesting that animals are just like i don't i don't care man you're the reason to people right to human beings (laughs) they're just like you're the reason it's so hot now i'm just going to use your pool i think it's just i maybe i guess animals are communists or socialists or whatever it is and it's uh it is very interesting and then yeah, but but you know the bear thing just i i was just looking through the news and I, I oh my god there's this zoo in china right and these things called the sun bear some breed of bears they're supposed to be apparently like the smallest in size i mean they're still huge but you know compared to other bears they looked a little malnourished as well like they're you know from some remote third world country <laughs> oh my god this is so bad uh this is a bear on in a famine 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 kind of uh <laughs> I don't know. so anyway the sun bear right uh these people go to the zoo in china i don't know what city this was and uh who would know how to pronounce their names anyway i'm just <laughs> i'm just i hope no one listens to this episode just so just so they don't realize i'm just like slagging off every nationality and whatnot i'm just sounding racist Anywho, this bear, the sun bear, like some people see it and they go, hey, hey, man, 
I don't think that's a bear. That's like a human being dressed up as a bear. Because here's here's the thing that were what made them suspicious. It was standing on its hind legs. Is that what you say? When they're like on their feet, they were standing on his feet. All right, he was standing up like a human being. It kind of I saw the clip. It's really funny. It's a, he does this kind of like a wave at the crowd. Again, he she I don't know. I don't assume they they waved at the crowd and um and then uh some people have pointed out like there's like extra fur on the person you know how when you wear a costume and it just doesn't fit properly so that's what it kind of looked like i saw the video i was like maybe a little bit a little bit but when you watch the other video like clips and pictures of the sun bear i was like eh, i don't know i think it looked real enough but <laughs> but it went viral in china and then i found out why why the Chinese are suspicious. So apparently, because it's not the first time some zoo in China has tried uh, pulling a fast one. <laughs> These are really great stories. So apparently, like, apparently a couple of zoos in the past, two different zoo, zoos that I'm talking about, one of them tried to pass off a, how do you pronounce that? Mastiff, Tibetan Mastiff? They're, they're ferocious looking dogs, the Tibetan Mas mastiff i think that's how you pronounce it um big ferocious dogs and they, <laughs> they tried to pass it off as a lion and it's only when people got close they uh they realized it's a dog because it barked <laughs> the dog started barking and they're like wait a minute <laughs> so all these people were really mad there and then apparently another zoo tried the same didn't learn their lesson from their bre brethren, <laughs> fellow people, and uh, and tried to pull the same thing, except they went a step further. They put a golden retriever and claimed it was an African lion. I mean, that one was just so obvious. I, I coming back to that first one, <clears throat> the massive one. I, I I forgot the details. I don't, I don't know where I read it, but I think they had. Um, I think they tried dressing it up as well as a lion as a bit or something. That was that sounds so hilarious. Anyway, so these two zoos got caught. Who knows? Those those are the stories we've heard. How many more times people <laughs> in China apparently get screwed over at zoos and go, "Hey, that's not what I paid for." <laughs> and so and so I guess that's why people were like suspicious and thinking, "Hey, this this is not a bear." All right? <laughs> But you learn, you learn. I, I just seeing that um, kind of cool new bear for me it was kind of interesting to see it. Um, yeah, so so that's how I started off my day with the news. Uh, I'm just about to have another sip of this car chai. Well, first sip. I think it's cooled down just enough. You know, you got, you look at your mug and and you how do you know when it's ready, right? I can still see the steam like on top of the cup and uh i don't want it like i don't like lukewarm stuff i like a hot cup of tea a hot cup of coffee but um i also am not a fan of burning my tongue see you know what the other beautiful thing is you guys can't see this but if you looked at this cup of tea it looks like karak chai all right like the color is caramelish it's caramel it's perfect like it's in a mug anyone who saw this right now would think this is the best most accurate cup of Karak Chai ever made. And yet, I have this sinking feeling <laughs> that I'm going to take this sip and it's just going to be disappointment all over again. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Give me a sec. Let me just... I'm going to do it right now. It smell. It even smells great, right? I just brought it to my nose. It smells perfect as well. Like, it's ridiculous. Hold on. Hey, shit. Oh, my God. I'm not making this up. This one's not too bad. This is... I'm finally getting it. Oh, maybe I was, I've was i just been burning the milk too long. That's it. You know what? After you pour the milk in. In Karak Chai, you boil the tea first. You put all the stuff in and then you boil it. And then you put the milk in at the end. And I think, I think I've think i just been boiling the milk too long. So this one kind of tastes roughly right. I got to take it. Hold on, guys. I, I got to take another sip. Celebrate this. Make sure it, I, I, it's not a mistake. Oh, my God. Yes, it is. It is awesome. I have finally done. You guys just caught a live uh, moment, a great moment of history. It's recorded now where a, a man struggling against all odds. <laughs> 
and and constantly losing and not getting it right and and and, and almost giving up i almost gave up yesterday i'll tell i'll come back to it in a second let me finish this ad almost giving up continues gets up for that one more punch and gets it right and now he's victorious oh my god i <laughs> you know what my new fear is now i won't be able to repeat this <laughs> I'm so happy this has come out right, but I have this sinking feeling it was a fluke. <laughs> I wish I remember properly how much I put up everything and how long I... Oh, God. Oh, oh, well, at least I'll just enjoy this cup, right? So the reason I'm saying... What was I saying earlier about... I took a pause about the chai. Oh, God, I can't remember. So, no, no. I, I Okay, yeah, this is what, what happened, right? So, this is, a, this is a true inspiring story for all of you people out there. I'm going to change your life, right? <laughs> so, yesterday, uh, I went, you know what? Screw this. <laughs> After, like, another failed attempt, I was like, screw this. I'm going, there's a place near my house. It's about, it's a 10-minute walk, uh, maybe a little bit more. And uh, they do that, they do this Karak Chai place. So um, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to walk over and just grab a cup. It's cheap. It's two dirhams, right? It's like, I'm like, why am I, <laughs> why am I putting myself through this? I'm just going to walk over and get some chai for myself. Screw this, man. What am I doing? And so, so I, so I walk over and halfway, this is me defeated. This is the hero. He's, he's gone. I'm, I'm done. I, I'm giving up. And uh, I'm I'm doing the walk towards I'm, I'm going towards the dark side, <laughs> and it's and it's hot outside, and that's like, here's the problem, right? I'm walking over. I'm like I'll have to do this every day. I'm gonna have to live like a failure every day till my family's back, and I can have someone make karak chai for me. And and I, and the problem is it's too hot to stand outside and drink it. So I'm gonna have to walk over, get this miniature cup, walk back to my house. And hopefully it won't have become cold by then. And then have my cup of tea. And I ha- I don't know if I have the time every day to do this. So I went halfway through. I'm walking, defeated. Uh, people throwing stuff at me. Uh, the gods look, God looking down at me going, ah, I expected more. And uh, <laughs> I stopped myself from saying gods. My inner Muslim came out. Oh, anyway, so I'm I'm there and, and I'm almost there, but there's a grocery store, right? <laughs> a corner store. And I stop and I go, this is stupid. I'm a grown man. I should be able to make a cup of Karak Chai. I should be able to get this shit right. I've done harder things in life. So I went into the grocery store again, bought more loose tea because um, that was what you need for this. Bought the bought the milk. You, you need this like thicker milk that you do that you use with this uh karak chai and i went back home folks i went back home i didn't do it i said i'm gonna make a i'm gonna do this right and i came home and i tried again last night and i failed <laughs> so i was like oh no this was a bad bad call but today i woke up and i was like you know i was just i guess i was fresh and i was just thinking you know what i just gonna try it one more time. Try. So I've been tinkering every time. That's the thing you got to learn, right? About life. You got to tinker. Everybody needs to tinker, tinker, tinker a little bit. <laughs> you got to you gotta look at the thing and go, all right, um, I'm, I'll add a little less sugar. I'll boil it for a little longer. I'll add a little more tea. And you just mess about. And here I am. I'm, I've got a good cup of tea now, man. I'm so happy. Um but yeah, like I said, I'm not. <laughs> Let's see if we can. Re- True champions are the ones who can keep doing every day in and out, right? And that's that's the next challenge. So, those are my Karak Chai uh, stories. Now you might be wondering, you might not because you might just have better things to do. Uh, but you might be wondering, why is Salman in this position? Why am I sitting at home suddenly in the middle of summer, uh, trying to make the perfect cup of tea and the thing is my family uh if you haven't caught up on the last few episodes my family is in london right now having a great time the nanny the bay the my kiddo zayan i keep i keep saying he's a baby but he's four years old and uh and my wife 
and they're over there. They're having a nice time. It's nice and cool. But all of them, except for Zayan, could make a better cup of tea than I could. So I would let them make me a cup of tea whenever they were making one for themselves. Like that's that's a trick. You just go, uh, so, hey, you having tea? And you go, oh, yeah, I guess. You just you kind of put the, you, you put it in their head. <clears throat> subtle. <laughs> nice and subtle. And uh, <laughs> just have this, like, uh, subconscious music playing in the background. Tea. You want tea. You, you, you want tea. <laughs> Something like that. And, and pretty soon they'll want to make one. And everyone's nice in my house. So they go, hey, would you like one? And I go, yes, I will. <laughs> I am a... I'm going to have that cup of tea. Now they're gone, and I'm not doing too well. I'm not doing too well. I I really miss them, and I wake up every day. Part of me is very sad, man, because my, you know, you, you wake up and your son hugs you, and and my wife is lovely, and I just love spending a little bit of time with them before I get on with my day. And, and, and I don't have that right now. I'm sad. I'm super sad. And, um... And I don't feel like eating anything because, again, I have to make it. You know, that's <laughs> – I have been very good about my diet the last few days. I've been uh, making some stuff at home. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> surprise. I can cook, but I can't make chai. <laughs> All right? The, the, the plot thickens. Um, I make decent enough food and I, you know, uh, because I'm eating for myself, I'm just making like lighter – uh, low calorie stuff, easy stuff to do, and uh, and I feel better. I I every every beginning of the month I check my weight. Uh, I don't check it more than once a month because uh, sometimes I cheat and I have a look, but I try to be disciplined about not you know because then you get obsessive about it. You keep looking at it, and I just think I don't know what's the right time. Maybe some people should look at it weekly or biweekly. I don't know. I just go. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a look every month, and. Uh, and just see what's the difference, what's happened. You know, tinker, tinker, what I said about, what I said earlier, tinker, tinker. And uh, I have lost 0. 0.30 <laughs> kilos. This is particularly sad because uh, I can't, uh, the other thing I kind of check is my waist because I read somewhere about how your waistline really tells you how healthy you are, right? Uh, so even if your weight's up and down, the waistline is is a much stronger cue to like how well you're doing, how your heart's doing, blah, blah, blah. Makes sense, right? It's a fat around your tummy. How much of that do you have? And that is not budging, man. It's like it's frozen. I have lost weight and it just feels like it's frozen. And I won't tell you what my waist is because I'm embarrassed. But it's almost like it, my age and my waist are like identical right now. So, um, so that's a hard bit. So the weight thing, I, I check it once a month and... Uh, uh, I, why it's slightly disappointing is because, you know, I I look I also monitor how much workout I do because I have my Apple Watch on all the time. I check I, so I clock in all the workouts. Uh, it clocks all the workouts for me, the amount of time, the amount of uh, exercise I did, blah blah blah. And from last month and this month, I doubled it. All right, so I doubled the amount of calories I burn. And well, exercise time I I did two hours in total extra right um and then <laughs> and then i looked at the weight and i'm like this is this this should be a lot less um having said that i've been eat, i was eating really bad up until uh they all left um they're gone for another 25 days man this is crazy ah um but hopefully the one good thing that might come out of it might i say might is that i might lose a little bit of weight um Unless I start filling my karak chai with sugar to make it taste better. <laughs> That's not what I've done. That's not what I've done. I do add sugar, but just a little bit. Um, you know, I was pre-diabetes, uh, uh, pre-sugar. What is it? What's it called? Like sugar was on, you know, on the edge. I was on the edge and, uh, and, and that scared me. So I stopped checking it. And so I, <laughs> I was just like. Hey, if if I haven't checked, then I'll always be pre diabetic. Pre diabetic. Um, no, I kind of control it. It goes up and down. I have a sweet tooth, but I. What do you do, right? You just. Uh, anyway, hey, I've been gigging, and it's been nice. Um, 
we've got another one coming on the 4th of August in a couple of days. It's at one of my favorite venues in Dubai. It's the Clavichord. Um, it's run by my friend Mick Dodd. He's a great comic. He, he runs this uh, comedy night called Mad Cat Comedy Club. And Rushdie and I were doing a little bit of improv, but the three of us were talking. And, you know, we have we've been... I particularly have been very lazy about writing new stuff, new jokes, and we've got a few bits. So I've got this show coming up, and then in a couple of weeks we're going down to Karachi, uh, and I'll share more details on my social. So if you if you're there, or if you want to tell someone to go watch that show, it's at District 19. We're we're just about to make all the announcements, and it's going to be cool. Um, I'm taking Rushdi with me and Marie, and we're just going to have a great time there and see how it goes. Anyway, so. So I've got these couple of shows and um, and we just bet each other let's let's write a few minutes of new material uh, for this show for the fourth and uh, and now I've got a that's what I've got on my things to do man I gotta I gotta like have polish up and write up some of these jokes for five minutes and see how it goes I'll, I'll tell you guys how it goes afterwards um, it's always exciting when you try new jokes because. When you get it right, there's a there's a huge satisfaction and rush. Um, it's also you know it's a creative process. You do the same joke over and over, uh, it becomes muscle memory, and to me, it becomes a bit boring. Obviously, if the audience hasn't seen it before, they still love it. But you, as a, an artist, stop growing. Um, when I first started stand up comedy, I remember <clears throat> I remember writing some of these jokes and thinking, I will you know. I'll never be able to come up with anything better than this or funnier. And that is so stupid, right? Like those jokes I cringe at now. I just look back at them and go, my God, they're horrible. Um, <laughs> and some of them I wouldn't do if you paid me a million bucks. Okay, I would do it for a million bucks. What am I saying? Uh, but yeah, so, you know, it's interesting how it goes and how you feel about where you are and what material it is. I look back at photos and I go, Oh my God, I, I, I wasn't that bad. I wasn't that, like, I, I didn't have that much of a weight problem. Things that hit me more now. It's uh, it's crazy how much we, in the moment, criticize everything about ourselves and feel like failures, right? <sighs> There's a lot of failure talk today, um, but but in a good way, right? So you got to, what, what else have I been up to, man? I don't want to start a lecture at this point. Um what have I been up to? Uh, apart from being home, you know, the, the good thing is I've been socializing a bit. That's been nice. I've been catching up with some friends, uh, finding out some of the stuff going on in their lives and feeling better about my own life than... <laughs> no, I, I don't mean that. I do mean it. Um, and it's nice. It's nice that way to spend some time social. I'm a, I'm a, I can be a social butterfly sometimes. So when I'm around people, I get, I do really get charged up and, and want to like um want to coast that like i feed off i'm a maybe i'm a have you guys watched that shows what we do in the shadows it's so cool there's a new season out but again because i'm in dubai i can't watch it just yet because they haven't released it here it's so frustrating right anyway um i caught up on all the other seasons and they they're one of the vampires about it's about a bunch of vampires that live together it's kind of like a mockumentary uh dot uh, thing it is a mockumentary and uh and I love it because they they have one vampire with them that's called the energy vampire. And he can go out in the day. He basically just feeds off other people's energy. And I just, as I was talking about the social thing, I just went, oh my God, what if I am an energy vampire? And that's how I, <laughs> how I energize myself. I don't know. Uh, maybe I am. Tough luck for you. Good for me. Um, but yeah, I've been socializing. I've been hanging out. I've been eating better. It's uh, that way. It's been a little decent, um, and yeah, dude, I I gotta go write this material. All right, I really knew. I I don't want to be embarrassed in a few days. I've got four days, three days, three days, and, and I don't want to be embarrassed in front of those guys. Honestly, God, yeah. All right, uh, you guys have a good week ahead. I'll catch you up. Have a happy August. Oh my God, it's August. I forgot. It's the 1st of August. All right, nice. Yeah, you guys have a good time. I will catch up with you. Take care. Goodbye. Or as a dog would say, woof. <laughs>